In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, on this most holy night, in which our Lord Jesus passed over from death to life, we are gathered here in vigil and prayer. This is the Passover of the Lord, in which, by hearing his word and celebrating his sacraments, we share in his victory over death. Let us pray. O God, you are like a refiner's fire, and your spirit enkindles the hearts of your faithful people with the fire of your love. Bless, we implore you, this new flame, and those who keep this joyful Easter festival, that burning with desire for life with you, we may be found rightly prepared to share in the feast of light which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Christ Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever, the beginning and the ending, the Alpha and the Omega. His are time and eternity. His are the glory and dominion, now and forever. By his wounds we have healing, both now and forever. Amen. May the light of Christ, who is risen in glory from the dead, scatter all the darkness of our hearts and minds. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, pour out on us your abundant blessing, that all who in true faith share this night in joyful celebration of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead may be filled with your heavenly benediction. Once we were in darkness, but now we are in the light, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May each get a processional candle. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. The light of Christ, Thanks be to God. Rejoice to all the earth 
in the radiance of the light now poured upon you. Heavenly brilliant, by the brightness of the everlasting King, know that the ancient darkness has been forever banished. Rejoice, O Church of Christ, clothed in the brightness of this light. Let all this house of God ring out with rejoicing, with the praises of all God's faithful people. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places with all our heart and mind and voice praise you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, and your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. For he is the very Paschal Lamb who offered himself for the sin of the world, who has cleansed us by the shedding of his precious blood. This is the night when you brought our fathers, the children of Israel, out of bondage in Egypt and led them through the Red Sea on dry ground. This is the night when all who believe in Christ are delivered from bondage to sin and are restored to life and immortality. This is the night when Christ the life arose from the dead. The seal of the grave is broken and the morning of a new creation breaks forth out of night. Oh, how wonderful and beyond all telling is your mercy toward us, O oh God, that to redeem a slave you gave your Son. How holy is this night when all wickedness is put to flight and sin is washed away. How holy is this night when innocence is restored to the fallen and joy is given to those downcast. How blessed is the night when man is reconciled to God in Christ. Holy Father, accept now the evening sacrifices of our thanksgiving and praise. Let Christ the true light and morning star shine in our hearts. He who gives light to all creation, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. In this most holy night, our Savior, Christ the Lord, broke the power of death, 
by his resurrection brought life and salvation to all creation. Let us praise the Lord, for he truly keeps his word. The Son of Righteousness has dawned upon us who have sat in darkness and in the shadow of death. first reading, appointed for the Vigil of Easter, is taken from the book of Genesis, chapters 1 and 2. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and he called the darkness, he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the water. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven, and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so, God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good, and God said, Let the earth sprout vegetation, plants according, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each one according to its kind upon the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens, to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. And God set them into the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth, across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures, and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarm, according to their kind, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good, and God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply upon the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock, and creeping things, 
and beasts of the earth according to their kind. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds and the livestock according to their kinds and everything that creeps upon the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And then God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, male and female, he created them. And God said to them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food, and to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth. Day. And thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, through your word and spirit, you most wonderfully created all things. And through the word made flesh, you brought new life to fallen humanity. Grant that in your mercy, we may be conformed to the image of him who shares fully in our humanity even Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Genesis chapter 7, 8, and 9. Then the Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and his mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and his mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the heavens also, male and female, to keep their offspring alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month, on that day all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened, and rain fell upon the earth forty days and forty nights. On the very same day, Noah and his sons, Shem and Ham and Japheth, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with them entered the ark. They and every beast according to its kind, and all the livestock according to their kinds, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth according to its kind, and every bird according to its kind, every winged creature. They went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh in which there was the breath of life. And those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him. And the Lord shut him in. 
The flood continued 40 days on the earth. The waters increased and bore up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters prevailed and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the face of the waters. At the end of 40 days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and sent forth a raven. It went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters have subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set her foot, and she returned to him in the ark, for the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took her and brought her into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. And the dove came back to him in the evening, and behold, in her mouth was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and sent forth the dove, and she did not return to him anymore. In the six hundred and first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried from off the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. In the second month, on the twenty-seventh day of the month, the earth had dried out. Then God said to Noah, Go out from the ark, you and your wife, and your sons, and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, so that they may swarm on the earth, and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out, and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him. <clears throat> then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, Behold, I establish my covenant with you and your offspring after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the livestock, and every beast of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. It is for every beast of the earth. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O Lord, you kill and you raise to life. You brought the flood upon a wicked and perverse generation. And yet you saved faithful Noah and his family in the ark. Keep us in safety in the ark of Christ's body, the church, that your mercy may come to its fullness and your salvation be preached to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The third reading is taken from the book of Genesis, the 22nd chapter. After these things, God tested Abraham, and he said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. He said, Take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering, and arose, and he went to the place of which God had told him. Now on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes, and he saw the place from afar. And then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, and he laid it on Isaac his son. 
And he took in his hand the fire and the knife. So they went, both of them, together. And Isaac said to his father, Abraham, my father. And he said, here am I, my son. He said, behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went, both of them, together. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there, and he laid the wood in order, and he bound Isaac his son and laid him upon the altar on top of the wood. And then Abraham reached out his hand, and he took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes, and he looked, and behold, behind him was a ram, caught up in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went, and he took the ram, and he offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven, and he said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you. And I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven, and as the sand that is upon the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh God, since you promised faithful Abraham that he would be the father of a great multitude, you provided a substitute for his son Isaac. In the fullness of time, you sent your son, the lamb who takes away the sin of the world, to lay down his life, that we might live as faithful children of Abraham. Grant to all people a living trust in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. reading from Exodus chapters 14 and 15. When Pharaoh draw near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they feared greatly. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you and you have only to be silent. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the people of Israel may go through the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they shall go in after them. And I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his host, his chariots and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord 
when I have gotten glory over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horses. Then the angel of God, who was going before the host of Israel, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them, coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel. And there was the cloud and the darkness, and it lit up the night without one coming near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the people of Israel went in the midst of the sea on dry ground, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went in after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And in the morning watch, the Lord, in the pillar of fire and of cloud, looked down on the Egyptian forces and threw the Egyptian forces into a panic, clogging their chariot wheels so that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from before Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its normal course when the morning appeared. And as the Egyptians fled into it, the Lord threw the Egyptians into the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen, and all the host of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians, so the people feared the Lord. They believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh God, you once delivered your people Israel from bondage under Pharaoh and led them by a pillar of cloud and fire through the sea to safety. Grant that we may so follow Christ, that through the waters of baptism we may daily die and rise with him and walk in safety through the wilderness of this life until we see your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, the 55th chapter. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourself in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me, hear that your soul may live, and I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call a nation that you do not know, and a nation that did not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way 
and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, that he may have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so too shall my word be that so too shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and it shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your word, you created and sustain all things, and by your spirit you renew your creation. Grant now the water of life to all who thirst for you, that they may bring forth abundant fruit in your glorious kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Ezekiel chapter 36. I will take you from the nations gather you from all the countries, and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleannesses, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. And I will give you a new heart, and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh, and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, cause you to walk in my statutes, and be careful to obey my just decrees. You shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, by the death and resurrection of your Son, you cleansed our hearts and put a new spirit within us. Grant that all who are brought to newness of life in the fellowship of the body of Christ may show forth in their lives what they confess with their lips. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy, the 31st chapter. Now, therefore, write this song and teach it to the people of Israel. Put it in their mouths, that this song may be a witness for me against the people of Israel. For when I have brought them into the land flowing with milk and honey, which I swore to give to their fathers, and they have eaten and are full and grown fat, they will turn to other gods and serve them, and despise me, and break my, my covenant. And when many evils and troubles have come upon them, this song shall confront them as a witness, for it will live unforgotten in the mouths of their offspring. For I know what they are inclined to do even today, before I have brought them into the land that I swore to give. So, Moses wrote this song the same day, and he taught it to the people of Israel. And the Lord commissioned Joshua, the son of Nun, and said, Be strong and courageous, for you shall bring the people of Israel into the land that I swore to give them. I will be with you. When Moses had finished writing the words of this law in a book to the very end, Moses commanded the Levites, who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, take this book of the law and put it by the side of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, 
that it may be there for a witness against you. For I know how rebellious and stubborn you are. And behold, even today, while I am yet alive with you, you have been rebellious against the Lord. How much more after my death? Assemble to me all the elders of your tribes and your officers, that I may speak these words in their ears, and call heaven and earth to witness against them. For I know that after my death you will surely act corruptly and turn aside from the way that I have commanded you. And in the days to come, evil will befall you, because you will do what is evil in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger through the work of your hands. Then Moses spoke the words of this song until they were finished in the ears of all the assembly of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O God, the exaltation of the humble and the strength of the righteous, you taught your people through your holy servant Moses to sing your sacred songs and deliver to them the law that still directs us. Display in all nations the fullness of your power, that as you blot out all sins through your forgiveness, terror may turn to joy, and fear of punishment may be transformed into the hope of salvation. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. reading from Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel, Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let 
Let us pray. O God, your Son came as the Son of Man to breathe his word and spirit upon the dry, dead bones of Adam's children. Grant that we may hear your holy word, receive your spirit, and rise each day from the death of sin to live in newness of life before you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah, the third chapter. I will leave in your midst the people humble and lowly, and they shall seek refuge in the name of the Lord, those who are left in Israel. They shall do no just injustice and speak no lie, nor shall there be found in their mouths a deceitful tongue. For they shall graze and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all of your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall never again fear evil. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, let not your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. I will gather those of you who mourn for the festival so that you will no longer suffer reproach. Behold, at that time I will deal with all your oppressors, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown, renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you in, at the time when I gather you together, for I will make you renowned, and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Let us, <clears throat> let us pray. Look in mercy, O Lord, upon your faithful people, and by word and spirit bring to completion that good work which you have begun in us. Gather in your people that all the world may see and know that what has been cast down is raised up, and what has grown old is made new, until the work you have begun in us is brought to its joyful fulfillment in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the reading from Daniel chapter 3. King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold, whose height was 60 cubits and its breadth 6 cubits. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then King Nebuchadnezzar sent to gather the satraps, the prefects, and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then the satraps, the prefects, and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces gathered for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And the herald proclaimed aloud, You are commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, you are to fall down and worship the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, as soon as all the peoples heard the sound of the horn, the pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, all the peoples, nations, and languages fell down and worship the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. 
At that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and maliciously accused the Jews. They declared to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree, and every man who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews who you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, pay no attention to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar answered and said, that, said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image that I have set up? Now if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, to fall down and worship the image that I have made, well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury, and the expression on his face changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace heated seven times more than it was usually heated, and he ordered some of the mighty men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their cloaks, their tunics, their hats, and their other garments, and they were thrown into the burning, fiery furnace. Because the king's order was urgent, and the furnace overheated, the flame of the fire killed those men who took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell bound into the burning, fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up in haste. He declared to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. He answered and said, but I see four men, unbound, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the appearance of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the door of the burning, fiery furnace. He declared, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire. And the satraps, the prefects, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together and saw that the fire had not any power over the bodies of those men. The hair of their heads was not singed, their cloaks were not harmed, and no smell of fire had come upon them. Nebuchadnezzar answered and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him and set aside the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree, any people, nation, or language that speaks anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn limb from limb and their houses laid in ruins. For there is no other god who is able to rescue in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O God, your son protected faithful Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace of the king. Grant us protection in our time of testing that we would boldly confess your name 
reject all false worship, and live and die in confidence, knowing that we are safe in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please stand as we sing together the song of the three young men.
On this holiest of nights, the whole church of our Lord Jesus Christ recalls his death and burial, rejoicing with great joy in the gospel of his glorious and mighty resurrection from the dead. The Apostle Paul says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him, we know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemn the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his host in the Red Sea, yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold us all according to your boundless mercy and bless us with true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through this saving flood, all sin in us which has been inherited from Adam and which we ourselves have committed since would be drowned and die. Grant that we be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers, and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, we would be declared worthy of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, hear us. Paschal Lamb, who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world, have mercy on us who was crucified for our transgressions and raised for our justification, have mercy on us, who foretold your passion, saying, The Son of Man must be crucified, and on the third day rise again, have mercy on us, 
who destroyed death by dying and by rising to life again brought life and immortality to light, have mercy on us. Whose resurrection was first announced by the angel to the women, have mercy on us. Who appeared to Mary Magdalene and was worshipped by her, have mercy on us. Who revealed yourself to the two disciples on the Emmaus road and made yourself known to them in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread, have mercy on us. Who appeared to the disciples, bestowing on them your peace and your spirit, have mercy on us. Who showed your wounded hands and side to the Apostle Thomas, that he too might believe, have mercy on us. Who appeared to seven disciples on the Sea of Tiberias, bringing a miraculous catch of fish, have mercy on us. Who appeared to Peter and to the twelve, to over five hundred disciples, to James and to all the apostles, and to Paul on the Damascus Road, have mercy on us. Who commissioned your church to make disciples of all nations by baptizing and teaching them, have mercy on us. By your glorious resurrection from the dead, good Lord, deliver us. By your victory over sin and death, good Lord, deliver us. By your, the majesty of your risen body, Good Lord, deliver us. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, Lord Jesus, that we may daily die and rise with you in our baptism and walk in the freedom of your forgiveness. Grant us, good Lord, that we may set our minds on things above and not on earthly things, serving others as we have been served by you. Grant us, good Lord, that we may dwell with you forever in the new creation as citizens of the heavenly Jerusalem, together with all the saints. Grant us, good Lord. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia!
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you made this most holy night to shine with the glory of the Lord's resurrection. Preserve in us the spirit of adoption which you have given, so that made alive in body and soul, we may serve you purely. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to, the, to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there, and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb. And she saw the two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. In the name of Jesus, a few brief words, after he is crucified, dead, and buried. But before he rises again on the third day, we confess that Jesus descended into hell. St. Peter writes, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison. Because they formerly did not obey, when God's patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers having been subjected to him. It is a great and sublime mystery, this article of our faith, that Jesus' first order of business after reviving in the Spirit is not to exit the tomb, but to descend into hell, to proclaim to the spirits in prison. As we gather this evening in the waning hours of the second day, in eager anticipation of the third day, the 
it's good that we remember his descent. Both divine and human natures, the whole person. And we praise God that the first person to hear an Easter sermon was the devil. Christ sent into hell is not for punishment or additional suffering. It is the first step in the glory of his resurrection. The article on the descent is an Easter article. Martin Luther, in, an, in a sermon on the descent into hell, said, It is characteristic of a strong faith to make this article of faith, that is the descent into hell, strong and sure, and to write these words, Christ is risen, with large letters on the heart, and to make them as large as heaven and earth. So write it big, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, Alleluia, in the name of Jesus. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and at all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, and everlasting God, and most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. 
This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, O Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Welcome to the Lord's Altar. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you, body and soul, by your cleansing.
let us pray. O God, for our redemption, you gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of the enemy. Grant that all our sin may be drowned through daily repentance, and that day by day we may arise to live before you in righteousness and purity forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. We early hasten to the tomb tomorrow at 6.30 for our sunrise service or 9 o'clock for our uh, chief divine service. Uh, but one last time before any of the other people get to do it. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is, he is risen indeed. Alleluia. Blessed Easter to you. Alleluia. That's right.